Hi, my name is Willan Ziada, and I'm a New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film, and I'm also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I am so excited to be speaking with an acclaimed artist who is not only an amazing record producer and sound designer, but he's an advocate, an advocate for those living with a speech impediment. Francois Goudreau. Francois has told me that it is okay that I mentioned that he has a speech impediment. And thus, we conducted this interview a little bit differently than the others, but nonetheless, we conducted it. And I am so honored to have spoken with him. Here is my interview with the incredible Francois. Will, I just want to say thank you for having me on. This uh, ep ep episode will probably be a little bit longer than the other ones you've done, just because of the extra t time that I require. But I really appreciate you making space. Um, doing this kind of thing is um, it's because of what I have to go through mentally it's kind of overwhelming so I've got some notes here I hope you don't mind if sometimes I look like I'm glancing down uh, I'm fully fully into this uh, and I really appreciate you uh, you creating this space well Francois I am honored to be here with you and appreciate you for all of the amazing art that you put out into the world, but also again, for all of the advocacy work that you do for those living with a speech impediment. And um, I have my first question for you, which is where did you grow up and when did you know that you had a special musical gift? Okay, so well, my mom and dad, uh, they were in a uh, this like 80s cover band <laughs> before I was born. Uh, so, like, I grew up on all that, you know, glam and pop uh, 80s music. Um, I grew up in a small town in Ontario, Canada, very similar to, like, the Midwest uh, USA. Uh, it was a very musical French-Canadian family, you know, fiddles, accordions. Um, but I didn't get into music at first. Um, I was a creative, smart kid, you know, but I, I couldn't show those things because of the, the stutter that I had and still have. I, uh, I did my best, but, you know, you can't help but get, uh, get discouraged, especially as, as a kid. So, so, um... I had all this creativity, but no way to get it out. Um, and that's when I, you know, kind of by accident discovered that I could um, write songs, right? So people who stutter usually don't s stutter when they s s sing. Uh, and that's true for, for me. It was like a cosmic gift, you know? Um, it's like discovering some kind of a mystical portal um i could say anything and uh so so i never looked back wow that's incredible francois truly a testament to the power of music and the power of singing um my next question for you is i want to know how the group hello kelly was created and talk a little bit about the up and down journey Hello Kelly's taken from its inception to today. Yeah, so I quit university uh, in 2004 to start a rock and roll band. I called it Hello Kelly. Um, and we came out with an EP. One of the songs on that was called Hey Elizabeth and that song kind of kind of took off um this was at kind of the peak of that uh 
emo pop punk craze so um you know and i had grown up as one of those emo kids who didn't really feel uh, seen or heard so we really tried to speak to those same kids um we wanted our fans to identify as kelly uh, so one thing led to another and we signed a deal with a label in the States. Um, but that was right around the time when the industry went you know, like fully digital, right? And uh, everything changed. Uh, the label was suddenly out of cash and they wanted us to fund our own projects, but they weren't... Pro promoting them so that was just a disaster meanwhile I was so desperate to keep this band you know going that I I did something crazy and I moved to uh, to, to to Nashville uh, and rebooted Hello Kelly there and we you know we certainly tried, but uh, Hello Kelly finally just kind of died of exhaustion in uh, two th 2012, yeah. Um, so fast forward eight years later, right, and I had kind of, well, I would got married and we'd moved back here to Ontario, and I was like, I'd accepted it, right? I was totally fine. Hello Kelly is behind like it's 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 done but I I didn't expect to meet new new guys here and I didn't expect to get all these song ideas but you know uh, suddenly we find ourselves um, our new single sweet nostalgia is one of my favorite songs that I've done and uh, we're really excited about this new season. Um, yeah, and so we just announced that uh, there's a new full length coming this fall. Oh, well, I cannot wait for the fall. And I want to know, Francois, how have you used your speech impediment as a superpower through your inspiring music? So for the longest time, I saw this thing as something I needed to hide. I was so ashamed of it. Um, so when I started Hello K Kelly, one of the reasons I did was because I could say anything in these songs, especially on stage. Um, I kind of felt like I was um, super a super man coming out of a phone 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 booth you know I could finally be who I felt I was inside something but um, the the thing is that I was hiding uh, behind all of that see like, like every creative um, uh, venture runs in runs in to snags yeah like people quit a project is canceled stuff like that but for me these things weren't just happening to the project they they were happening to my uh, to my voice right my ability to express stuff I I I I conflated those and that was really problematic because uh, it made me really, really desperate. <laughs> um, turned me into someone that I did not enjoy being. Uh, so then I found myself hanging out at a church. Um, and I made friends with all these tattooed uh, misfits. Uh, who'd been kind of pushed out of town by their uh, 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 other churches. Um, and they really helped me to de de detangle my 
identity. I know that sounds so intense, but and and one of these friends um, was disabled. She walked with a cane, right? So, and it was her who invited me to call my stutter a speech disability instead. Um, to label it as something that I didn't have to hide, that I didn't have to be ashamed of. Uh, totally changing everything. Um, so I started wearing that 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 that, 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 uh, that badge, you know, of um, disabled, uh, and I was very humbled that this friend, you know, invited me in to that. Um, so that now, as I've, re as I've returned to Hello Kelly, I've been able to do it from a much healthier place. Um, like, um, yeah, the making music, it's no longer my only way to have a voice, but it's still my favorite way. Uh, making music, Francois. You're absolutely right. There's simply nothing else like it. I want to know, where do you see yourself in five years, in 10 years? So as I've said, uh, I spent a really long time uh, being desperate for f f fame, trying to, you know, become a, st a star. Um, it's just so... Um, isolating. You feel so alone. Um, so when the band went on hiatus, I got to experience such a different existence. You know, family, friends, community, you know, uh, having a crap job. And somehow I enjoyed all of that. Um, and so when we started to talk about bringing Hello Kelly, you know, back again, I was really concerned about having to choose. Um, it almost made me call the whole thing off, but we talked about that. We talked about it a lot. And... Um, we just really wanted to agree on how the five of us, four of us, five of us, sorry, were, <laughs> were going to define success. I said five because we're talking to, to, to a new guitarist to add. Anyway, um, we wanted to agree on how we were going to define success because we all really enjoyed our lives, you know, and so Hello Kelly was going to have to be something that fit into them instead of, you know, you know, absorbed it all. Um, so what we kind of agreed on was that if we're just going to be a great regional act that's great that sounds fun great and if opportunity knocks for something else we can figure that out but we you know the world just tries to tell you that having that kind of uh kind of balance is impossible but it isn't um you just have to be really vigilant about knowing who you are and what you uh, want. Vigilant about who you are and what you want. Well, I couldn't have said it any better myself. Francois, I need you to give TED Talks across Canada, across the United States, around the world. You're so inspiring, my friend. Um, my last question. So with this new social media app, Phoenix, it's gonna help obviously connect artists with other artists and other fans new fans all over the world. And I want to know what you're most excited about, about that whole notion of connecting with other people. Okay, so this is actually a 
big question. Um, you know, this band started uh, in 2004. It's a long time. Um, and everything was very uh, different back then. I know this makes me sound like so freaking old, but back then the most you interacted um, with your fans was like your MySpace page. Um, obviously the world is very uh, different now and uh, honestly it's kind of easy for guys like me who've been around a bit to feel um, intimidated by all of the the, the tech that is now a part of the music industry, but man, like I can't pretend to understand the fullness of what Enix is setting out to do. You know, I, uh, I'm a nerd about tech stuff, but I'm not, you know, that smart, but, uh, the thing I do know is that we spent a really long time disconnected f from our fans, you know, not talking to them and kind of just spinning our wheels, delivering stuff that they didn't care about. Um, and so like any tool that is going to strengthen that, um, connection and pull what we do into the future that's something we want to take very seriously so thank you no francois thank you uh this has been such an amazing talk and i'm so grateful to now know you and i truly cannot wait to collaborate with you as well um do you have any last thoughts for everyone Will, I just want to say thank you again. This has been really great. You know, for a, for a big chunk of my career, I haven't really um, been able, I haven't been given the space, I haven't had the self-acceptance, really, to talk, you know, and to give answers in this way. So you've created space here, and uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, I really appreciate what you're doing for all of these um, different artists that you're talking to. So just wanted to say thank you. And uh, yeah, if I can plug us again, go to our Instagram and uh, check out our stuff. Okay, rock and roll. Thank you. Digital age, artists and bands struggle to make a living. In fact, only a small number of artists can live off their craft. For the 98% of artists that don't have the luxury of being signed to a label, it's tough. But artists deserve to live off their art. Wherever you are around the world, appreciation of music does not change. Phoenix brings bands and their fans together, whilst allowing bands to properly monetize their passion. The Phoenix app will directly connect bands and fans with no need for middlemen. We're utilizing the blockchain to give the power back to the artist once and for all. Join Phoenix, join the change.